Christianity has historically been a religion in which science was encouraged and even used to help interpret scripture. Writers of the Old Testament, writers of the New Testament, the most respected early church father, and those in the medieval church had no problem using science. King Solomon in the Old Testament is said to be very wise, and many of the topics that Solomon was wise about were actually natural science topics. The Psalms, as well as many other places, tell us to look at nature to see God's character. In the New Testament, Paul uses science as a starting point to his evangelism and tells us that knowledge of the natural world will teach us about God. Augustine of Hippo, St. Augustine, one of the most important Christian church fathers during the 4th and 5th century, wrote at length about the connection between the Genesis account in the Bible and the natural sciences contained in the classic tradition. Augustine had no problem using natural science to help interpret scripture. He taught that the science of the day was a vital resource and was absolutely not a threat to Christianity. He thought that if the natural world was properly understood, that knowledge could then serve as a tool in the service of theology and in the service of the church. Augustine wanted Christians to be knowledgeable about the natural world and use it as a handmaiden of theology and religion. He worried about Christians talking nonsense about science and how that would hurt the religion. If Christians who naively interpreted scripture and didn't know current science expressed absurd opinions on cosmolog cosmological issues, that could provoke ridicule among those who actually knew the science and could discredit Christianity. Augustine's warning to Christians is still extremely relevant today. Dismissing or oversimplifying or misrepresenting the science does nothing to help the Christian faith. It misrepresents what the Bible teaches, it goes against our Christian history, and it causes scientifically minded people to just dismiss Christianity. Augustine wanted the interpretation of scripture to stay consistent with the science of the day and use science in his role as a theologian and as a Bible interpreter. Christians should think of scripture and creation as two books that can be read together for understanding of the fullness of God's self-revelation. Science is a God-given tool for discerning the handiwork of God in creation and is fully compatible with God's word revealed in scripture. Moving to the Middle Ages, critical reflection about the nature of the world was tolerated and even encouraged by medieval religious leaders. Natural science was one-third of the undergraduate curriculum in the Christian-funded, Christian-sponsored, and Christian-led universities. Aristotle was deeply, valued, was deeply valued by medieval scholastics who generally believed that his teachings on reason could be incorporated into church theology. In the 16th century, one of the most historic creeds of Christianity, the Belgic Confession of 1561, states in Article 2 that we know God by two means. First, by the creation, preservation, and government of the universe, since that universe is before our eyes like a beautiful book in which all creatures, great and small, are as letters to make us ponder the invisible things of God. God's eternal power and divinity, as the Apostle Paul says in Romans 1.20. All these things are enough to convict humans and to leave them without excuse. Second, God makes himself known to us more clearly by his holy and divine word, as much as we need in this life for God's glory and for our salvation. So, how is this done? How do we subscribe to this two books theory without compromising scripture? Well, there are usually many valid interpretations of Scripture when it comes to places in the Bible that speak of the natural world. This is especially true of the creation days in Genesis. Science can help us resolve which of these interpretations is correct. For example, the sun's created on the fourth day, after the water cycle and after the plants. Well, this sounds like nonsense to scientifically minded people. And there have been many interpretations of those creation days to try to explain how the sun could be created after the water cycle and after the plants. Well, atmospheric science and planetary formation models have helped us to narrow down the possible correct interpretations. And I'm not going to go through all of that now, but current science has actually helped us make sense of what could be going on in Genesis. 
Other times we read the Bible, and there's really only one interpretation, and the Bible makes it very clear what went on. The best example of this is that the universe was created ex nihilo, out of nothing. So Christians held to this even in the face of 2,000 years of disagreement from the scientific community. So when the Bible is very clear, and we know we've interpreted the Bible correctly, we don't need to use the science, right? And eventually the science is going to catch up as it did with the creation of the universe. But when there's many interpretations about what could be going on, then science can inform us about what actually happened. So God has put us in this universe and made us curious because what we learn about nature can teach us about him. Biochemistry is showing us that only an incredible mind can be responsible for the information and the intricate systems we are finding. Cosmology is teaching us the grandeur and vastness of the universe which had to be created by something even more grand. Geology and biology are showing us the incredible fine-tuning needed for life to exist on Earth and the care that has to be taken by the Creator just to make a home for us. The very small and the very large both point us to God and show us His characteristics and His greatness. The Bible tells us to do science so that we will see these characteristics. Christians throughout history have followed this instruction. It has been to our detriment when we haven't.